Siwa Island, situated in southeastern Sierra Leone, um, in the Moa River. Um, uh, it is uh, located very close to the Gola Forest. I think the Gola Forest is uh, more significant uh, in international conservation, or in conservation terms. But Tiwa is a small island, about 12 square kilometers, with um, a very, very high diversity of primates, uh, about uh, 11 uh, primate species, including the Diana, red colobos, black and white, olive, um, and then we have chimps as well. We have a pygmy pool, uh, it's, a, it's a preferred habitat in that area, and 135 different species of birds have been recorded. A uh, taxonomic study revealed that we have at least uh, 700 different plant species on TY, so very rich for all kinds of purposes, especially biological research. Uh, it's um, increasingly becoming a very popular destination for ecotourists as well. TY was, was, was initially uh, discovered as a biodiversity uh, research destination by Professor John Oates uh, in the 1970s. Uh, he was researching for um, Olive Colobus and I apparently discovered that TY had uh, some populations. And of course that initial expedition led to further you know, um, efforts to conserve this, this sanctuary uh, and, and of course going through a lot of community uh, uh, talking issues as a community because this place people used to farm there before they used to mine these diamonds on TY, I believe it or not. And, and they were um, um, creating, uh, setting traps and doing um, poaching until uh, it became a sort of a national pride, so all steps were taken to declare it a sanctuary. It took a, a few years, but they got there, and then in the early 80s, uh, early to mid 80s, uh, when it was already gazetted, uh, the conservation work began, and there was a lot of research ongoing until the war actually started in 1991 when the rebels first arrived in the area, all conservation work was abandoned and uh, a lot of people fled. Some of the staff and people living around the area were killed. And so for the next 10 years, uh, this place uh, lay in ruins uh, until in 1999, uh, when EFA was looking to uh, document uh, interesting places in Liberia and Sierra Leone that were worth writing home about, if you like, because at the time the, the, the international image of Liberia and Sierra Leone were very negative. Uh, it was like, oh, this is the place where people chop hands, people are shooting each other and so on. And coming into Europe at the, that time, my family lives, lived in Europe at the time, in Ireland, and every time I was coming and going, they were like, oh, you're going to this horrible place and of course I knew that there were horrible things happening there but also this was a place that had a lot of beautiful places that were worth protecting so um, we wanted to do a publication about uh, the, um, the our natural heritage and so TY was one of those destinations and that's how I discovered TY. I had never been there before, I'd never even heard of it and um, arriving there I was struck by its beauty, its serenity but at the same time, um, very disappointed by the, the fact that all of the buildings had collapsed on the island. There was a lot of empty, empty shells of cartridges. Uh, poaching was rife and a whole lot of other activities. In fact, the communities were on the verge of beginning to, st uh, to, to, to lay farms because as far as they were concerned, um, its conservation days were over. Luckily, we just came by on time and um, renew their hopes. We, the next few months we had um, a lot of meetings and discussions uh, which led to promises that we would try to find money if they stopped the poaching and took a collective stance to ensure that nobody went there to do anything until they heard from us. 
and indeed uh, six months later they heard from us because we heard from um, we learned of the CPF grants uh, for biodiversity hotspots and that TY could actually qualify as a priority for conservation so it didn't take long for us to get uh, positive feedback from the CEPF Secretariat that uh, we could develop a proposal. So one thing led to another and a year later in 2001 the project was approved and took a few months to finalize the details and July 2002 is when actually conservation work began.